Welcome back to another very entertaining, very educational video by me, Mitch, Coding with Mitch, where I'm gonna show you how to use the new navigation animations with Compose. Just to show you kind of what the difference is like with the new Compose animations, on the right here I have an app, it's the same app, but it has no animations applied to the navigation. So when I click here, it just kind of, you know, brings it into view, doesn't really look that nice. If I go backwards, again, no animation, just, it's okay, but uh, it would be very nice to have some animations. Now let's go over here where I'm running it on my real device. Of course, it's gonna look a little better also because it's on my real device. It's gonna be a little smoother, a little better, but check out these animations. So if I click on this, I can have that nice slide in horizontal animation. Going back, I can also slide out. And there's also a, a, an additional fade animation applied to the transitions. So not only does it slide in and out, but it also fades as it slides in and out. And this is really, really easy with the new uh, animation APIs. So in this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know, where to get the dependency, where to read a great blog post written by Ian Lake about the changes. Uh, a sample that I found was also really great, and I'll give you a link to this sample also. So the dependency is one of the accompanist dependencies. I'll put a link to this down below. Uh, so just go to this page and you can get this dependency right here, and the version is 0.16.0. So that's the first kind of step. You wanna get that into your Android Studio. Uh, let me actually just show you where mine is just so you can see it. You have version 0.16.0, at least as of today, right now, which is August uh, 6th, 2021. And this is the artifact right here. So just grab that, get that into your build.gradle file. So I'm actually gonna do that right now, add that, and I'm going to sync my project. It looks like it's kind of lagging a little bit, so I'll manually sync this. Uh, and then I'm ready to use this and I can show you everything you need to know to apply this to your project. So I'm gonna show you everything you need to know in this video, but if you want to read more about it um, and get more information, our pal Ian Lake from Google writ, uh, wrote, I said writ, that's not a word, wrote a great article like he always does about the changes. So if you want kind of more information, like all the information, I suggest you read this article. But really the only thing that you need to know is kind of this section right here. He tells you, uh, the, the imports and how you need to change your app. And you can see this is a very short list. There's only four points. Like I said, this is very simple, like everything with Compose. It works great, it looks great, it's simple. Thumbs up, let's go apply it. So in the sample that I just showed you, I really just have two screens in this project. There is a list of heroes from a Dota 2 API. When you click on the hero, it takes it takes you to a detail screen. So this is the finished version of the app. It's got the animations applied to it, uh, but let me just show you what it looks like again without the animations. So just like clicking, it just kind of comes into view. So we want this one to look like this one. Let me show you everything that you need to do. So let's just go through uh, Ian's checklist here. So number one is replace remember nav controller with remember animated nav controller. All right, so I'm gonna copy that. Scroll down to where I have my navigation all set up. Here's my remember nav controller. Let's change that to remember animated nav controller. The next thing he says to do is replace nav host with animated nav host. So let's do that. Let's replace that with an animated nav host. And then the third point is remove this import, which I believe I don't have, but let's go take a look. So if I search for that import, yeah, it looks like it's not there. So I'm just going to add this import. So let me copy that and uh, I'll just add this to the bottom just so it's kind of really clear. So I've added that, still not using it. Now the last thing he says is to rem remove this import. So let's search for that one. There it is, remove that. And we want to get this import right here. So copying that. And again, I'm gonna put it right at the bottom so you can see it. All right, so now we are ready to use our new animations. So um, I'm gonna show you kind of the ones that I applied, but I wanna point out another sample that I took a look at. It's this sample right here. Again, I'll put a link down below. Uh, Ian actually retweeted this guy's sample on Twitter and that's how I found it. But he has uh, basically a very similar app, like he's got a list screen and then he's got a detail screen. Uh, I thought these were GIFs, but I guess they're just screenshots. But he, he has a great sample. If you wanna take a look at how he set up his animations, just go into, uh, let me see, go into UI, navigation, and adopt the navigation. I believe this is where his animations are. Yeah, so you can take a look here. You know, he has the animated nav controller. Remember, animated nav controller. He has enter transition, exit, pop enter, um, enter transition, exit, 
pop exit. So all of he covers all of the different types of animations, and this is this is really the sample that I uh, I built mine off of. So before we add those transitions, like here in the sample, I pointed out you know enter transition, exit transition. I just want to kind of preface this by talking about what these are. Like what are the the types of animation you can have? So you got four main types of animations. You have an enter animation. Uh, I guess I'll do a, a one there. Number two would be an exit animation. Three is a pop enter. And I'm going to talk about like what these are in a second. If you're familiar with, you know, the navigation system, navigation compose artifact or navigation component, uh, you're going to know what these are already. But for those of you who don't, let me just quickly explain this. So those are your four types of uh, animations that you can have. Uh, the enter animation, this one is for when you navigate uh, to something. But really, you should think of it as more like forward navigation. The exit animation is or the exit parameter is the opposite. So it's like an exit uh, navigation. So this is kind of hard to explain, I think. So if you're navigating to a detail screen, the list screen is what is exiting. So you're you're entering the detail screen, but this would be applied to the animation that on the screen that you're leaving because that one is exiting as you move forward. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'll just write, I don't know, like on exit or something. And then the pop enter navigation. So the pop enter, this is what happens when you pop the back stack and something comes back. So like, uh, for example, in our app, in the list screen, when you click on the detail, when you click on one of the list entries, you get navigated to the detail screen. If you were then to press the back button, you're popping. So it's a pop enter on the thing that's coming in. So you're going back to the list screen. So it's the animation on that list screen as it comes back into view after the pop. So I don't know, I can just say like enter on back or something because that's really like what's happening. It's the animation uh, that the thing gets when when it's coming back into view when you pop the back stack and then pop exit. This one is the animation for the thing that's leaving. So like if in the list of detail example, if you clicked on a list entry, go to the detail screen, if you press the back button, the animation for the, the list screen coming back again, that's the pop enter. Uh, and then the animation for the detail screen as it goes out, that's the pop exit. That's how that's how all these parameters work. So we can just say, uh, I guess, exit on back or on pop or however you however you want to think of that. So hopefully that makes sense. I just want to do a quick kind of clarification. Those are the four types of animation when you're dealing with navigation. Now let's go and actually build these animations. So in my project here, I have these extension functions, these Kotlin extension functions, one called add hero list and one called add hero detail. These are extension functions on the nav graph builder. And this is the composable where you uh, add the animation. So if I want to animation, add an animation to my hero list, which is the, the you know, the screen that displays the list of heroes, uh, I can simply go into this composable and I can type in those different animations. So like there's an exit transition. Uh, let me just get that Add these parameters, which we're not going to use. Uh, and then here is where you would put the animation. So let's start. Uh, let's start simple, I guess. Let's do like a fade out animation. Uh, you need to specify an animation spec. So this this is built on top of the compose animation APIs already. So this stuff should be very familiar to you. Uh, I'm going to use a tween, which is like the simplest one and just say tween go for 300 milliseconds. So now when this when I exit this screen, when I navigate forward to the detail screen, there's going to be a little fade out animation. Let's add a couple more animations just so you can see uh, really what this looks like. Um, actually, now that I think about it, the list screen, um, there's really only there's only two possible animations for this one. That's going to be uh, when they exit. So the exit transition. So that's when I click on one of these, there should be a uh, animation when I exit and then also when I pop enter. So like if I'm at the detail screen, I press the back button, the pop enter animation is going to be on that composable. So let's just write that one in. So let's do pop uh, enter transition, do the same thing, add those parameters, which we are not going to use and do fade in animation, animation spec and set that equal to a tween and do 300 also. So let's run this and just take a look and see what that looks like compared to what we had before. All right, so if I click on one of these list items, we should see the fade out animation for this screen. So let's check that. It did fade out. And then if I go back, it should be a fade in. So fading out and then when I go back, fading in. Fading out and then fading in. So already that looks like a lot better and I even even haven't even added any animations to the detail screen. 
but we can make this a lot better. I want to have, as you saw from the demo, I want it to slide in and fade out. And then when I go back, I also want it to slide out and fade this one in. So the cool thing, or one of the coolest things about this is you can actually concatenate animations. So here on this exit transition, I have fade out, but I can also add a different one. I'm gonna add, or I can add an additional one. I'm gonna add a slide in horizontally. So open this guy up and set a parameter, the target uh, offset, offset. Oh, actually this should be, sorry, this should be a slide out horizontally. And it sets a target offset to how far you want the screen to slide out off the screen. So that's why I'm gonna make this a negative number. And just for now, I'm gonna do negative 300. Uh, then you pass the animation spec. So just like with every animation, there's gotta be an animation spec. Let's add a tween, do duration in milliseconds, 300 milliseconds, just like our fade out and also do uh, set some easing. You can specify any type of easing that you want. This is essentially like the acceleration uh, graph of the animation. By default, this is a fast out, slow in easing animation, the tween. By default, that is the value. So I just wanted to show you that like, this is how you would change the easing, but I'm just gonna set it to whatever the default was originally. So now that we have these two animations inside of our exit transition, all I gotta do is add a plus sign here, and it's gonna add the slide out animation with the fade out animation. I think this is so cool, being able to add animation so that you can get like two different ones happening at the same time. So now I want to do the same thing with the pop enter animation. So I'm gonna copy the slide out horizontally, come down here, paste it, and we're gonna change this. This is gonna be a slide in horizontally animation. And instead of having the target offset X, we want an initial offset X and set this to 300. Now, after those changes, let's run this and let's see what that looks like. And then after we're gonna apply some animations to the detail screen. Okay, so let's click on Zeus and look for that slide. So it did slide. Also, there was the fade out and then Zeus just kind of appears. And then there you definitely see when I go back, it does slide into view. So the, the emulator is kind of bad. Like I can't, it, it doesn't look as good on the emulator as my real device, but it's definitely working. Like, especially when I navigate back. So there's the forward, you can see it kind of sliding out. And then when I navigate back, you can definitely see it sliding in. So of course this doesn't look great yet because there's only animations being applied to the one screen transitions, the hero list screen. So now let's work on the animations to the other screen. So I'm going to copy both of these because I think that's probably going to be the easiest, even though they're going to be slightly different. So copy both of those, scroll down to my add hero detail if you're following along anyway, or if you're just watching, just you know, continue watching along. I'm going to paste these in and we need to change these. So for this one, we're not going to have an exit transition because this for the detail screen, the only way for this to exit is through a pop. So we need a pop exit transition. And the only way for this to enter the screen is an enter uh, transition. So those are the two ones that we need. We need an enter transition for when, when it comes into view and we need a pop exit animation for when it leaves the screen. So those are the only the two, op the only two options. So let's change this to an enter, uh, enter transition and we want to have slide in horizontally. Whoops, we want slide in horizontally. So actually I can just copy this one down here for the, from the pop. Uh, put this up here so now we have a slide in horizontally the initial offset here is going to be 300 so it starts it's going to like when you watch it really when you watch it slide in it kind of starts like if you were to draw a vertical line on the screen it starts kind of like around here when it slides in so let's see that again sliding in it starts like around here so that's what that, that 300 is and then down here for the next transition we want a pop exit transition so that's when you press the back stack or press the back button right here. What's the animation when that leaves the screen? For this one, we want the slide out horizontally. So let's go up to our other animation and grab this one, the slide out horizontally. Copy that guy, come down here, paste that in. And looks like I've got some formatting issues. I probably have an extra, I'm missing a bracket right here. So now we have a, uh, we have an enter transition for the detail screen. We have an exit transition and they're essentially opposites of one another from one another from the from the list screen. Uh, oh, it looks like I'm missing another bracket. Hmm. All right. Well, there we go. That seems to be good. So let's run this, and this will be the only animations that we can we are we are uh, you know really need to apply for this project. But you could like if you had a different project where there was more types of ways to get to certain destinations, like in this you know there's only a list screen and a detail screen, and the only way to uh, get to the detail screen is by clicking a list item. The only way to get back is by pressing the back button. So you're limited on the transitions that you need. But if you have 
you know, different ways to get to different destinations. You want to make sure you include enter transition, exit transition, uh, pop enter transition and pop exit transition. Safe to just, you know, have them all. This one I'm going to run on my real device because it's just going to look better. The emulator, I think, just does not do it justice. So let's try going forward. There's the forward and there's the backward. Uh, something doesn't look right here. Forward looks good, but backwards, it looks like it's coming in from the from the right. Uh, I think in the in the detail, so the detail screen, these ones should both be positive, and in the list screen, these ones should both be negative. So both the slide out horizontally, target offset X is negative 300, and pop enter the slide in horizontally should be negative 300. Let's run that and take a look. Okay, so let's try forward. There we go, and then backwards. That looks much better. Forwards, and it comes in from the looks. It looks like it comes in from the left as you pop. So those, those look great. I think these animations APRs are super simple. They look awesome. I've been waiting for these compose animations for the navigation for the navigation system. It just, uh, it looks so much better and uh, they, they did a great job just like with everything with compose. That's gonna be it for this video. Just wanted to finish off your Friday by showing you something cool. So get out there, try it out, add it to your projects. As you saw, it's super simple. And also I wanted to make an announcement. So I've been working on a new course, a modularization course. So how to build a multi-module Android app. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, obviously how to build a multi-module app, the ways to modulize. So like, do you do by feature, by layer? Do you do some kind of a hybrid model? Uh, I'll give you a little hint. We do the hybrid model and I talk about specifically why I think doing it by feature and layer is really just not the answer. So it's still in development, like the code is all done, but I'm still actively, you know, filming lectures. If you want to watch it, you can go to my website, codingwithmitch.com, go to courses, and then it should be, you know, near the top, at least if it's, you know, close to August 6th anyway. It's called Modulizing Android Apps. I've got uh, quite a few lectures up already. It looks like there's almost three hours of content published so far. Uh, if you're curious and you wanna see kinda what this is all about, click on the course demo here and I'll take you through a course demo. Some of the kind of high level topics that we're gonna be going through is, you know, Kotlin obviously, Clean Architecture, MVI, which is my favorite, Multi-Module, Compose, KTOR for your networking data source, SQL Delight for the caching, Coil, Unit Test, UI Testing with Compose, Hilt Dependency Injection, Testing with Hilt, so how to set up Hilt for testing, and also, you know, obviously building an offline first application where you cache the images, cache the data, all that stuff. Thanks for watching, have a good weekend, and I will hopefully see you next week or see you in the course. Have a good one.